I'd like to thank everyone who is joining us today. Welcome to today's Cell webinar, New South on distributed file system in the cloud native era. I'm Vivian, product and open source community manager at JD.com. And since I'm ambassador, I will be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenter today, Shuo Ran Liu, architect at JD.com. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as a candidate. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as that is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be a validation of that code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all your following participants and the presenters. Please also note that the recording and the slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page, www.cncf.ao slash webinars. With that, I will hand it over to Shuran to kick off today's presentation. Shuran. Okay. Uh, thank you, Yuyan. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Shuran, and I'm an architect at gd.com and also one of the maintainers uh, of TrueFS project, which is a distributed file system, of course. Uh, so today, I would like to talk about some uh, new ideas and or thoughts uh, when we uh, design and develop Trouble FS. Mm, the most frequently asked question uh, about this project is that uh, why did you start this project considering that there are many uh, open source uh, options uh, in the uh, storage uh, distributed storage uh, market. Well, uh, the reason is that uh, our department runs and maintains a large uh, uh, scale, uh, a large scale of Kubernetes cluster, and we uh, need to provide uh, reliable storage solutions for applications uh, deployed in the cluster. Uh, Although there are many choices, uh, we always find that there are new challenges when uh, using them in, in a, a cloud native platform. Uh, so, and uh, du during, uh, and we came up with some uh, new ideas and uh, uh, inno innovative thinkings uh, when dealing with these challenges. So we really wanted to um, implement this uh, in a real production environment. So that's why we uh, started this project. And also uh, another reason is that uh, it seems the recent development of storage uh, system uh, is focusing on how to leverage the latest low latency uh, storage medias. Uh, which is, I think, is it, uh, great. Um, it's the future. Uh, but for now, uh, traditional storage medias uh, still dominate the massive storage systems in most companies, I think. Uh, so can we still optimize based on these traditional uh, storage medias like uh, hard disk and SSD? Uh, the answer is yes, and I will cover this topic in the following slides. Okay, um, but uh, of course we should not uh, ignore the cutting edge technologies uh, in storage hardware. Uh, so I will also talk about uh, how Trouble FS uh, use uh, low latency storage media in a cost effective way. Uh, so let's get started with uh, the 
uh, container storage interface spec. Well, this picture is a, a, model, a life cycle model of a dynamically provisioned volume. Uh, well, uh, there, are, uh, there are several models mentioned in the spec, but I think this one is the most uh, popular and complete one. Uh, so I'm going to use this one as a starting point. So what can we get from uh, this picture? Uh, is that uh, volumes are created and published by uh, the controller, and uh, then they are staged and published by node. So uh, what does it mean to a storage vendor? Well, uh, I think uh, it means that uh, in, 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 in a cloud native platform, uh, volume creation and deletion are common behaviors now. So uh, your system needs to uh, deal with such requests very uh, quickly and easily. And uh, another thing is that uh, multi-tenancy is a necessity right now. Uh, if you uh, if your system would like to uh, have the capability of dynamic provision, so uh, then what we got here is a mind map. Uh, of course, uh, some of the items are from a real customer needs, but um, but uh, this volume life cycle is is just a starting point of this man, uh, man map. Okay, uh, so from the, the model of volume lifecycle, we, we can get that uh, the system has to uh, provide a dynamic provision capability, which means that your uh, distributed system uh, should be multi-tenancy and easy and fast to create and delete volumes. Oh, sorry. Another thing is that uh, since there are many uh, different types of applications uh, in the same cluster, uh, there can be diverse read or write uh, uh, data access patterns uh, from different customers uh, issued to your uh, storage system. Uh, it means that, uh, for example, uh, some applications relies on uh, sequential read or write uh, to, to, to the storage. So um, that is uh, very, uh, I think that's uh, great for the distributed uh, bell system. But um, for some other applications, uh, there might be lots of random uh, read or write to the storage. And uh, uh, this is a big challenge for distributed file system. And also, uh, it means that there can be both large and small files uh, in, your, in, in your volume. Uh, we all know that uh, distributed file systems are good at uh, dealing with large files, but uh, for small files, um, it is a big challenge. Mm. The reason is that uh, for small files, uh, metadata meta operations takes uh, a large proportion of the whole data process. And then uh, bridge uh, upstream and downstream apps well, this, this, this one is uh, actually from a uh, real customer needs. Uh, since there are different cloud native applications in the cluster and they, uh, they would like to use uh, Drupal FS as a data pipeline. Uh, for example, uh, the upper stream applications uh, would gather uh, raw data and put their data files in Drupal FS. Then the down, uh, for uh, the downstream 
customer to use, and the, the downstream customer will just uh, pull the data and do some uh, some uh, analyzations uh, locally. Uh, so uh, my point here is that uh, different customers may have uh, different uh, actions on the same data. So uh, it is better to provide uh, the customer with uh, different uh, interfaces, uh, specifically speaking, uh, POSIX compa compatible interface and uh, S3 compatible interface. For example, uh, some customer would uh, get the raw data and put the put a, his data file into YFS and then append to the file constantly. Append to that file constantly. So, uh, well, for these customers, they prefer to use a POSIX compa compatible uh, interface. But for some other uh, customers, uh, they just pull the data from DrawFS, and uh, this is a one-time thing. So uh, object store uh, interface, such as uh, S3 uh, compatible interface, would be more suitable for them. Uh, so it is better to provide uh, diverse interfaces uh, based on one copy of the data. And uh, the last one is uh, cross-node data consistency. Uh, since we have different applications accessing the same, uh, the same volume and uh, the same uh, data, uh, there should be a, a consistency guarantee be, uh, between, between nodes. Well, it won't be a problem on a single node, but uh, for cross-node consistency, uh, this requires a lot of thinking. Mm. And what can we get from here is that, uh, as we all know that POSIX uh, file system semantics is not very suitable for distributed uh, system. So uh, it, is very, uh, it is impossible for us to comply with POSIX semantics completely. Uh, we need to uh, do some trade-off or compromise between the performance and the uh, uh, semantic compliance. Uh, but the question is, uh, to what extent shall we compromise? Or which semantics can we compromise? Well, I, uh, I will uh, cover this topic uh, in the uh, later. So um, from the mind map, uh, we come up with some uh, new challenges uh, for cloud native storage. Maybe not new challenges, but uh, challenges for cloud native storage. Uh, first of all, multi-tenancy, of course, uh, as we mentioned that uh, uh, cre uh, volume creation is a common behavior right now. And then, Elastic, uh, elasticity, scalability, and high availability. Well, these are the common requirements for all uh, distributed systems. Uh, I think it's hard to achieve them all, um, but uh, the most di difficult part is how to avoid bottle. Uh, I think the most difficult part uh, to achieve them is how to avoid bottlenecks in a cluster. And these bottlenecks uh, includes uh, performance-wise and uh, capacity-wise. Uh, for example, if you have a node that all operations uh, should go through, then this is a performance uh, bottleneck. Uh, if you have a node that uh, some kind of data must store on store on, then this is a capacity uh, bottleneck. And uh, in the 
in the later slide, I will cover uh, how DrupalFS uh, tried to avoid bottlenecks as much as possible. And also, uh, small, small files in a cloud native platform, uh, the, the amount of small files in a cloud native platform cannot be ignored. Uh, so in order to better support the customers, uh, we have to optimize for, uh, for small files. And uh, there are two aspects for this optimization. One is for uh, the high concurrence, uh, concurrent meta operations performance. Uh, how to increase the concurrency uh, meta operations uh, performance is a, a challenge. I think it's a challenge for a distributed file system. And uh, the second aspect is uh, how to store uh, small files data efficiently uh, efficiently on, on your data node. Uh, the typical way is to um, aggregate this data in a large uh, in a large block or trunk and but uh, the deletion uh, would be a complex uh, procedure because uh, there will always be a garbage collection uh, uh, process involved. So, well, but uh, 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 in, in, this, uh, in this data aggregation deletion, we come up with something uh, a little different uh, and will be covered in the next slide. And uh, another challenge is POSIX compliance and performance trade-off. Uh, this will be covered. And the last challenge is that uh, it is better to uh, provide diverse interfaces based on one copy of data. Well, this, these are the challenges that based on our uh, production uh, experience. And uh, we will we'll, we'll talk about how we um, tried to uh, deal with these challenges uh, one by one. And uh, the first one is how to avoid bottlenecks in the cluster. Uh, this, this, this picture is a um, is what DrupalFS cluster looks like after, the, uh, after it is deployed. So uh, there are four rows in this uh, in, in, in TrueFS cluster. One is the uh, the first one is the master node, uh, which is the resource manager uh, of of TrueFS. And uh, usually there are three or five master nodes uh, forming a raft group uh, in the cluster. And then uh, we have the meta node. Uh, for dealing with meta operations and storing metadata, then the data node uh, for storing data, uh, file data. Then we have a, a client uh, to interact with the backend servers and provide service uh, to the upper user applications. Uh, and here's the workflow of TrueFS. Uh, after the cluster is uh, deployed, uh, we need to uh, first uh, create a volume. And this, this request is issued to the, the master leader via HTTP request. And then the master will pick up some uh, meta nodes and data nodes to create meta partitions and the data partitions. Uh, well, of course, this, uh, this node selection follows some uh, strategies based on the resource utilization uh, and fault tolerance policy. Uh, so for one meta partition, 
there are three meta nodes forming a raft group. And uh, for data partition, there are uh, three data nodes, but uh, with dual uh, protocols, which means uh, for newly written data, uh, 2YFS follows a primary backup protocol. And for overwrite, uh, it follows a, a raft protocol. So uh, in one data partition, there are two uh, replication protocols in one data partition. Uh, I, I'm not going to uh, dive into the details of this uh, replication. Uh, for those of you who are interested in it, uh, please check out the, uh, the GitHub document or the paper we published in uh, SIG mode 2019. Uh, uh, it is well described, uh, the, the whole system is well de de described in the document and in the paper. And then after the uh, volume is created, uh, client will get, will issue a pull partition uh, request uh, to, uh, to the master and get all the uh, partition view of the, of the the specified uh, volume. And then uh, the client can take a request from the, uh, from the application and interact with the meta node and data node. So, uh, so how, how we uh, manage to avoid bottlenecks uh, based on this, this architecture? Well, as you can see, there are only uh, three ma master nodes. Uh, there are only three master nodes in the cluster. So this is a potential um, bottleneck. Uh, but uh, from, from, from client side, there are two planes. One is the con control plane and one is the data plane. For control plane, uh, the client will a pool, a pool partition view from master only. And for data plane, uh, the client will interact with meta node and data node only. Uh, so what does it mean? Well, it means that uh, for read or write operations, uh, from, uh, for read and write operations from client, uh, th these operations does not involve the interaction with master at all. So um, it won't be a, a bottleneck uh, for reading and writing uh, files. And what kind of uh, request will be issued to master uh, is the cluster management request or uh, resource management request, such as uh, partition, creation, and deletion, uh, node online, offline, and disk online, offline, uh, something like that. Uh, th these are all low frequency requests. So um, three master nodes is good, uh, are good enough to handle these requests. But for the read request issued to master node, uh, for example, there might be uh, tens of thousands of clients in a single cluster. So, uh, and uh, each, cl each client is pulling partition view from master periodically. So uh, this kind of request can be a lot in a cluster. Uh, so, so we usually uh, deploy some master proxy uh, in a cluster, and uh, this read request can be load balanced to uh, those proxies. And this master proxy can be uh, can be done using uh, nginx because these requests are all HTTP requests. 
So uh, in in this way, we we tried our best to uh, alleviate the workload of uh, master nodes okay. as much as possible. Uh, so this is how we uh, tried to avoid bottleneck from master side. And uh, another another potential bottlenecks is the uh, is for small small files. And how how we uh, avoid bottlenecks for small files? Uh, as you can see, the uh, the meta partitions can be scaled out as well as data partitions. So theoretically speaking, um, there is no limit for the number of files in the volume. So um, there's no capacity bottleneck for, uh, for small files. And for the performance uh, bottleneck, uh, here's what we optimize for uh, meta concurrency operations. Uh, we investigated some uh, distributed file systems and found that the main limitations for meta concurrency is, uh, relies on the file creation strategies. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, let's take a look, look at the left side of the figure. Uh, when you create a file, uh, the the file system uh, applying locality strategy will choose the partition of parent directory um, in priority. So if you are uh, creating uh, lots of files under the same directory, then uh, this partition can easily become a, a hotspot. And uh, when the workload is heavy enough, uh, the file sy system will rebalance the, the files on this partition to a new one. And we always monitor a performance drop during this process. So we decided to uh, choose another, uh, another strategy. This, uh, we 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 want to uh, we want to spread all the files to uh, to 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 diverse uh, partitions. So this create file a request is divided into two uh, two requests. One is the uh, create inode request, and the other one is a create the entry request. Uh, this idea comes from the Linux kernel file system uh, because in a file system, I know number is the only index, uh, is the only identity to index a, 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 a I know. So when you create a, uh, when you create a file, the client will uh, first issue a create I know a request to a random partition, a random a writable meta partition. And this partition will uh, respond a annual number to the client. Then the client can create a D entry to the parent annual with the name, an annual number, and type. Well, uh, in this way, even if you are creating uh, lots of files under the same directory, uh, the inodes, all the files are still uh, spreaded into uh, different different uh, meta partitions. Uh, so this is what uh, our uh, strategies uh, is. Uh, is there any drawback for this strategy? Uh, of course, yes. Uh, first of all, the uh, for low uh, for low concurrency meta operations, well, the performance drops because um, 
for locality uh, strategy, uh, when you create when you are creating a file, you issue just one request to the to the meta partition. But uh, with this distribution uh, strategy, you uh, you will be issuing two requests to two partitions. So for uh, low concurrency uh, operations, the performance drops. But uh, I think this is a choice that you must make. Well, we um, then we choose to uh, we choose the concurrency performance as uh, a high concurrency performance. And secondly, that uh, the inode and the entry atomicity is uh, cannot be guaranteed. Uh, but this is the case, also the case in local file system uh, where there is a concept called orphan inode, uh, which means uh, the inode uh, without a corresponding D entry. Uh, so we can afford the existence of orphan inode, but the principle is that we cannot afford to have an orphan D entry, uh, which is the, uh, this is the principle uh, we designed the, the workflow of meta operations. So, but but we uh, we still need to uh, minimize the possibility of generating often I nodes. So there are two two uh, two actions to uh, minimize the possibility. One is on the server side that uh, our meta partition is highly available. Uh, there uh, it, it is a raft uh, following the uh, raft. Uh, replication protocol. And the second action is that on client side, we have a retry mechanism to fill the gap uh, when there is no raft leader in the partition. So in this way, uh, we can minimize the possibility of generating uh, often inode. And based on our production experience, uh, there are there are not so many uh, often I know actually. And of course we, we have a uh, offline tool called FSCK to clean the dirty, dirty data. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, this is how we improve the high uh, concurrency performance of meta operations. And for the small files data, uh, the typical way of uh, store small data, small files data is to aggregate those data into a large extent file. And uh, but uh, in this way, the deletion uh, will be a little bit tricky. That, uh, for example, uh, file two is deleted, and uh, this this block of data is invalid, uh, and we need uh, the file system shall do a, a garbage collection process to copy the valid data from old extent file to a, a new extent file. But after the copy, uh, you either update the meta node or you add a translation layer uh, between the metadata and the actual position of your file data. So this is a very complex uh, process. Uh, Below is what we uh, we do to uh, mitigate uh, mitigate the pain of GC. Uh, we used uh, because uh, on data node we are using a local uh, file system. So 
uh, how to how to release the disk space uh, if uh, one deletes a file. Uh, we used a standard Linux system called uh, punch hole. Well, the philosophy behind this is that um, for for epic for user applications, you cannot really uh, control where your data is stored on the disk. So even if you are doing a sequential uh, write on the user space, uh, there can be a, uh, the data stored on the disk can still be uh, uh, spread it and will not be uh, sequential. So the local file system is uh, good at dealing with uh, such situation uh, that it can uh, release the disk space uh, without uh, without uh, modifying the the, uh, the the offset in this extent file, so in this way, uh, there's no GC in the user level, and we don't need to update uh, the metadata. And then uh, is this is another challenge that uh, how to comply with a public semantics. Uh, the, the, prin the principle we use here is that we want to support mainstream widely used applications uh, in, the mar uh, in, the, in the market, open source market, uh, such as MySQL, uh, Elasticsearch, TensorFlow, uh, HBase, and uh, something like that. So uh, as long as we uh, these applications can uh, run on TrueFS directly, then we are good. Um, the, so uh, what semantics can be compromised uh, is based on this principle. Uh, for example, in TrueFS, we do not uh, support cross node append right, uh, operations. Um, but we do support uh, temporary files uh, usage. Uh, what, temp what is temporary files usage? Um, some applications will uh, create a file and uh, then delete it immediately, but without releasing the file descriptor. Uh, in this way, uh, other process cannot see the uh, the file and th the application, uh, but the the application holding the file descriptor can still write to this file as a temporary file. And after uh, and when finished, uh, the application just closed the file descriptor, and everything's gone. We do. Uh, this is some uh, applications, uh, this is the usage uh, that some applications uh, is going to use uh, this POSIX semantics. So we do support these uh, temporary files. And this, uh, this is a fusion storage. What does it mean? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it is better to uh, support diverse uh, interfaces uh, based on uh, based on one data copy uh, a copy of data. So this is how we uh, how we, we managed to to do that. Uh, there is a the the real uh, module that interacts with backend server is the SDK module, and uh, on, uh, be, on SDK, we, we, we can have a fields client and an object node. Uh, with, uh, 
with POSIX compatible interface, uh, the workflow is like this. The applications can uh, write, write to the VFS, uh, write to the kernel space uh, using file system call, file system syscall, and then go through the uh, kernel fields module and lib fields. And this, this one, uh, this lib fields will send the request to a Drupal FS fields client. Uh, well, in, in this way, uh, there is a drawback that uh, the fields client should be a start, started as a daemon on the same node as application. So uh, some, some of the customers doesn't like that. Uh, and we can still uh, provide uh, S3 compatible interface through HTTP uh, request. Well, in this way, uh, app, there is no daemon or process uh, started on the same no on the same node as application. Uh, we just uh, deploy some object node uh, in the cluster and providing an S3 compatible interface to the application. Okay, uh, so there are some other thoughts. Uh, how to benefit from low uh, latency storage? Well, as I mentioned that uh, the meta partition uh, follows the raft uh, replication protocol and raft log the, perform uh, the performance for storing raft log is a bottleneck for uh, meta operations. So we, we, we can uh, store raft log on this low latency storage and this will uh, improve the random write performance. And since raft log uh, will be truncated periodically after snapshot, so uh, the, it won't take up uh, so, mu so, so much space. So in, in this way, uh, so in, in this way, um, the low latency storage uh, media can be uh, used in a, a cost effective way. Another thing is uh, regarding the CSI plugin driver. Um, actually, this is something that we are not dealing very well with uh, because uh, as I mentioned that uh, the fields client has to start a daemon on the same nodes as application. So if uh, on one node there are, uh, you need to mount several uh, volumes, then uh, multiple uh, fields client will be uh, started and they are started in a single container. Well, if, if this container, uh, if this container dies, uh, all of the volume will be affected. Um, we are not sure how to deal with it very well. So uh, if you have a, a great solution, um, please feel free to contact us and we can discuss about it. Okay, so that's all for today's uh, presentation. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sharing a great presentation. We now have some time for questions. If you have questions that you would like to ask, please drop it in the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen. And we will get you as many as we have time for. Uh, the first question is, Shura, can you see, can you see the yes, first question? Yes, I can see this question. Oh. What is best to use files from an existing 
NFS file system into Kubernetes. Can I see that question, Fran? Um, Hi, Adrian, can you have, can you? Well, I think this question is uh, asking for how to run an FS um, in Kubernetes cluster. Okay, any more questions? Well, I think uh, maybe uh, we can discuss this uh, question offline and uh, I will contact the, uh, the guys uh, who is familiar with Kubernetes to answer this question. Is that okay? Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, no more questions. So great. Thanks for for a great presentation. All right. And this is all questions we have time for today. Thanks for joining us today. The webinar recording and the slides will be online later today. We are looking forward to seeing you in a future SimSelf webinar. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you for joining.